In this short video, I would like to demonstrate how you can use your tiny PFA, in this case a early prototype, to check whether your dual output signal generator can be used for phase measurement experiments. You set up both outputs to 10 MHz and the rest of the settings are the same. Output levels are minus 10 dBm. The second output is not yet enabled. So we are now measuring the frequency on the A input. And just to make life a little bit easier, we are going to null the A frequency. So that's now correctly set. We enable the output of the second port. And now we get the frequency difference between the two. So it's jumping up and down a bit. And we get the phase difference. Um, for this generator you normally would align the two outputs. So to get them correctly aligned. And here you see that the phase difference is now measured as being below plus or minus one picosecond. And it's hard to believe that this generator can actually generate phase differences between output signals with an accuracy of less than one picosecond. And that's because the output sampling rate of the ducts, the internal ducts, is only 125 mega samples per second. But the generator has another trick, and that is the, uh, the duct uh, resolution. This generator has 16 bit ducts. So by slightly modifying the points which are used to generate the sine wave output, it can generate a much higher resolution uh, phase output. So let's first see what happens if we use the full scale of the um, phase. And we do that by setting it to uh, 0.1 Hz difference. And you'll now see that the displayed phase here starts to resemble a sawtooth. And the measured phase here goes from plus 50 to minus 50, and it's continuity uh, moving over the full range. So the display resolution here on the display is 50 degrees per division, and you see the phase move over the total range. So yes, uh, the maximum phase difference is plus or minus 50 nanoseconds, and so we are now knowing what the range is. We go back to both outputs to 10 MHz, and we have to wait a little bit uh, before the, uh, the scrolling has happened, and we are back to the high resolution. We see that the phases are not aligned, so we press the Align button to get the alignment of the two output phases. And now we can go to the phase output and see what happens if we start to change the phase manually. Now they are at zero, so one less than one picosecond difference. We go to one degree phase difference and we have here about 276 nanoseconds difference. And on this display here we see that it's indeed one degree here. We have here the average of the total uh, graph difference. We go up one more and we go to 555 picoseconds difference, so that seems to be correct. Now let's see if the steps are equal. We can do that simply by taking steps up and down. And indeed, the steps perfectly match the grid. So that's good. But what is the real resolution? Because we have the capability to have three digits behind the comma. So let's check if that is correct. So we go to the point one degree phase steps. We step up. And we step down. And 
and indeed all the face steps are equal size. So that's good. That's good. Can we go one decade further? Let's do the steps. Wait till the full resolution is available. So we go up with 100, 200, 300. And here we observe something. And this is that the first step is half the size of the other steps. I'm going to step back. Here you see clearly the first step is half the size as the other steps. Thus that repeats itself. We go up. And it turns out that every sixth step is smaller. So let's see if we can go even further to the thousandths of degrees. If that is visible, wait till the scrolling has happened. Okay, there we go. No, not visible. Let's see when. Ah, at six at six it makes the step so the last digit of the face cannot be used to output anything so there's one more experiment what that i would like to do is what happens if you don't output a sine wave but instead use a square wave so we set this to square wave also the other one to square wave so they're now both square waves to the alignment and you can see it doesn't align perfectly it stays as 18 picoseconds and now we're going to go to the face to adjust it and we saw that the smallest resolution was here at the, the hundreds of degrees Ooh, that looks very different the steps are not equal size at all. There's much bigger difference in the steps. And you can imagine why that is. And that's because if you output a square wave, the duck cannot send interpolated signals at different positions in the sine wave. But it has to go completely up or completely down. So you basically fall back to the resolution of the uh, 120 125 mega samples per second of the of the, the output speed of the duck. Okay, I hope that this short video has given you some insight on how you can use the exceptionally high uh, face resolution of the tiny PFA to uh, do some deep dive into the face accuracy of your signal generator.